thank you for joining the Tuesday, June 12th Volta call. And so we'll be going over sprint three items today, primarily and some backlog and general discussion. We do record the session so we can post them later to the Volta playlist on YouTube. So please keep that in mind when sharing screens or during discussions and presentations as well. And with that, I think we'll go right into uh, today's agenda. So first off, we just kicked off sprint three. And so this one is scheduled to go through roughly the end of the month, and it's our usual three-week sprint. And so we'll just take a quick look at what we've got there at the moment. If I can get to the right screen, here we go. And I'll do a refresh in case anything changed. OK, so uh, we do have some of the items that Ken and his team have been working on that are still in progress, which we'd expected uh, after the discussions for Sprint 2. So I think that's continuing. And let me see if Ken is. Yes, I'm here. Ken, do you have anything that you need to comment on or questions for the group on on the in-progress work? I know those, those are in, in progress for Sprint 3. I, I got the impression this yeah. will, some of them will still go to Sprint 4. Okay. And because it's uh it's 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 starting to get a little bit more complex. It takes more time uh, oh. to to build up, and I'm just afraid that uh, by the time I'm ready, uh, because this is more containerizing the adapters, mm -hmm. that maybe uh, the adapters uh, folks will need a little bit more time to integrate uh, uh, that code into their into theirs. So, do you have a sense yet for when? Do you have a target for when you'd be starting the containerization work? I already uh, started that with Ponsim ah, and Nicole. Okay. It's oh, just like so I'm looking at right here. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm just looking at the at the work required and the I'm trying to to do all the heavy lifting in inside the library and some proxies, uh, but still uh, because we are using Twisted Python, we have no choice but to make changes inside the adapters. I got the impression like depending how how much change so far I didn't have to make much a lot of changes, but I doubt uh, it will remain like that. So I'll know uh, further down the road. Okay, I think that actually I'm going to jump ahead to one of the discussion topics that we started last week. Then, uh, since we're talking about the containerization of the adapters, so we had a brief discussion last week that. Um, Kind of when the containerization work for the adapters starts in earnest that maybe it'd be good to have a small group put together that had representation from each adapter and then have a sort of a coordinated effort so do we do we think that still is i, I for for the group for the group i think we need to decide is this something we want to pursue i got the sense from the last meeting that likely we do and then if so, I think we need to look at what's the appropriate time to kick that off. So I think that depends on, Ken, how your work goes and if you have a sense for when it might be beneficial for the, for the containerization, sort of a little sub-team to form with mm -hmm. adapter folks. Yeah, I, I will need to complete, uh, at least to have yeah. uh, some completeness on the, on the Ponsim uh, at least to have a, a very good idea of what would be required for the other okay. adapters, and then we can kick the kick off that. Okay, so if you can just kind of keep me posted on uh, when you think that's getting close to time to involve others, and then I can see if I can start putting together, we can try and put together a group and and get some communication going. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Ken. And, and while you're at the... Uh, at that uh, bullet point, I see a <laughs> bullet point above about uh, yeah. the uh, yeah. approaches for <laughs> uh, to create like different branches. I think yeah. uh, we may have to create a separate branch uh, for voltacon 2 because um, as I'm progressing in, in this work, uh, there's a lot of items currently that is all point all part of the the core and uh, the way we have structured all the branches everything is part of uh, of the core of volta but once we start to containerize things 
things has to move out in those different directories. For example, all the protos currently are part of the call, but they should not be part of the call. They should be outside in their own branches. Okay. So because of that, I got the impression like uh, we may end and like removing uh, things like uh, uh, expound. So I, I believe we will need a separate branch unless uh, there's, there's a different way of doing that. Okay. Any comments from the group? Uh, hi, Ken. This is Shad. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, are you planning on uh, supporting the Ponsum V2, um, like containerizing the Ponsum V2 uh, as you go along? Um, is the... Yes. Okay. So, which means that the Golang uh, support for, for containers would, would also come in uh, in 2.0? Uh, no. No, no, no. Uh, what I'm doing, like the Ponsim V2, this is just representing the OLTs and the ONUs. What I'm doing is the Ponsim OLT adapter and the ONU adapters. Those were that were part of the core. Those one are moving them out, but they are still in uh, in Twisted Python. And the reason why I'm keeping them in Twisted Python is because all the adapters currently are in Twisted Python. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. So, so uh, okay. So, in in two um, uh, if uh, if I wanted to, for example, rewrite open OLT in Go, that support won't be there. Yes. Okay. Good. Yes. Um, so, uh, wait, wait. Yes, maybe, it maybe, won't be there. Or yes, it will be there. I I, I thought you said yes. No, the yes, it won't be there. Yeah, the Ponsim OLT, the adapters itself, will be in Twisted Python. The Ponsim, but, but is there... that's the OLT and ONU. This one, the containerizing of OLT and ONU of the Ponsim, that's already done in Go. But but if, if Shad wants, wants to rewrite his adapter in GoLang, mm -hmm. and as long as, once we've got adapter containerization, that should be perfectly okay, yes? Yeah, that, that's okay. The, the only thing you won't be able to benefit for all the libraries that I'm creating. You have to yes, create your own right. set of... Uh, yes, uh, those libraries for Go, Go would probably come post 2.0. Mm -hmm, exactly. If you, yeah. if you, right, right. Okay, got it. Um, and the second question was, if, if you're going to branch out, um, and um, let's, say, let's say I want to uh, kind of track um, do the work in parallel with with uh, with the code changes. I, you know, it'd be nice if you could um, uh, at some point, uh, you know, uh, announce that yeah, uh, it's okay for uh, for adapters to also start experimenting on that branch, um, as opposed to you doing everything on the branch and then bringing it in. Um, that's one way. And the other way is uh, maybe if if if, uh, if if the adapter developers have time, they can work with you on the branch uh, to do some merging over there. Yeah, at, at this time it's uh, because I'm doing the integration between the the core uh, and the pond scene and using that library. At this time, there's a lot of things that I'm it's, it's fluctuating, changing here and there. So it's like it won't be beneficial for for people like okay. uh, for the adapters vendors. But once I get to a stage where it's like it's look like very solid, that's something that I can start to get the adapters involved. Then it would make more right. sense. Otherwise, it could end up wasting a, wasting time for the adapters. Sure, sure. I understand. Okay. Thanks. But I think uh, regardless of whether we choose to make a branch or not, we still kind of need to understand what the changes are going to be. And, and in particular, I'm worried about the technology profile work, which is supposed to be starting up in the core. Um, it, because if there's a bunch of work going on in the existing master core branch and then a bunch of other work, potentially incompatible work on, the, on this branch, um, then I don't know how we'll be able to merge those two together. I think uh, like uh, once, uh, I, I guess there's a discussion on Monday for technology profile. I don't know how much of it will be done in the core or outside the core. So once we know that better, uh, then we'll have to definitely, we, it's, we don't want to have two branches that is deviate from each other completely. But uh, for 2.0 with the changes that is happening, there, is, there, would be some, there would be some major changes. That's, that's for sure in 2.0. I think actually, why don't I 
jump down to, uh, since we talked about the tech profile discussion that we targeted for Monday. Uh, so Jono, is that something that you would be able to attend also? Uh, no, I'm actually out on Monday. Ah, I'm back on okay. Tuesday. Okay. Um, well, we'll record it, but if if you have any advanced questions, you could funnel over to either Sean or Ken, then maybe, the, or Volta Discuss for that matter, then maybe we can get those addressed during the tech profile discussion on Monday. Yeah, I guess it's just in general, whether we branch or not, it seems to me like mm -hmm. the refactoring of the core will basically block any other changes, any other kind of stream of changes from being done while that while the core is being refactored. Any other kind of what changes, John? I'm sorry. Um, like for example, if we want to do technology profile stuff. Um, I, I just don't see how yeah. how these two can proceed proceed independently um, at the same time. It seems like there's a dependency here. I that 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 makes sense to me. Um, if there's changes in the core, yeah, I believe, and the core is going to be rewritten in Go, for instance, then that needs to be completed before the other changes can be made. I would agree with uh, that. The, the code will not be written in Go for to that okay. It will be post to that all. But, so the question, I guess, would how isolated are the changes being made in the core? Um, is it just around the I adapter interface? Uh, mo most of the changes, well, there's a couple of changes. Uh, most of the, the biggest one would be, one is no found. It's, uh, it's uh, the interaction with the affinity proxy. One is southbound, which is all the uh, the adapters, containerizing adapters. And one also is, is the way we're going to interact with uh, the KV store. Uh, because at this time we load everything in memory, but uh, uh, in, in 2.0 we, uh, we are flattening out the, 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 the database where we'll have access directly to devices and logical devices. And there will be space for adapters to write as well. So th there, there, there are changes. Uh, but also the, the structure of uh, of the code repository will change as well. Okay, then yeah, I, I kind of think John was right here then. There is a dependency. There was also a proposal to, to split the core into three or four separate microservices, right? Is that also being planned for it, Uh Yes, that, uh, you mean the, there's the read-only microservice, there's a read-write microservice, and then we're, we're talking about one that will more kind of maintenance kind of microservice, or it was talk about technology profile as well. So it's uh, uh, the read-only microservice is, is actually being worked on. This one will be in Go because separate from, uh, from the rest. Uh, the read-write will stay into the Python. And, the, and then we'll, it will depend like how we want to proceed with the technology profile one. Well, I, I guess it was an open question around, you know, how the adapters would get access to the KV store. Um, you know, the, the adapters need to be able to read the technology profiles from the KV store, and they need to be able to write an instance of a technology profile. Uh, so adapters, yeah, ad you're correct. Adapters will have access to to the KV store in uh, into that. Okay, but I guess there was a question, do they have to go through some other service to get access or can they write directly? I guess that was kind of an open question that was I think, they would be able, yeah. I think they would be able to write directly. I, I don't see any reason why to go to different service on that unless there's a need to. Yeah, that was my impression as well that the everybody would just do Direct access to the KV store. Essentially, the schema in the in the KV score store is the API. Yeah, I think that would be a simpler approach. But uh, I guess there were some potential issues with that that um, Shad had had voiced. Well, I didn't catch those. Did are those captured somewhere? 
There, uh, well, the, the issue was part of one of the um, stories. Uh, let me uh, find the right one. Uh, let's see, seven thirty one. Just go, just go ahead. I'll, I'll let you know what the story is. So my, my, my concern here is I think uh, the tech profile work isn't really staffed now, and we haven't done a detailed design of it. Um, so uh, you know, um, and 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 I think this is this is the time to to design it and and in a, in a way that. And taking into account the core changes, uh, so at least for 2.0, uh, we can sort of bypass um, and not not have a dependency on on the on the core changes, um, and sort of think of ways where the adapter can has direct store uh, access to the KV store uh, and is not going through the core. Uh, uh, in in that way, we 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 do not create any dependencies on the core changes. But uh, the bottom line is is that. Uh, Profiles. Um, we've been talking a lot about it, but we haven't done a detailed design of it. I absolutely agree with you, and I, I think that's what we're talking about. Um, Sean indicated that you had some concerns about not going uh, direct access from the adapters to the KV store, if I understood correctly. I mean, I think the adapter should go just to the KV store. I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, was there a concern? Anybody had a concern about the direct access from the adapter to the KV store? Okay. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think uh, somebody said that uh, the I adapter interface is another place that it could go through. Yeah, it's, it's actually Vol 735 uh, is the story that, that uh, has those concerns, I guess. I'm fine either way. Uh, it's just that when you know, once you have a decision, let's just stick to it. Yeah. Yeah, I I think it should just go straight to the KV store. There's no reason to add a, an additional layer. Uh, there just adds complexity, and I don't think it buys us anything. I'm okay. Th I'm still looking for the issue that was brought up here. Um, I mean, yes, oh, no, it could go through the adapter or a different yeah. microservice, but I don't think it needs to. Yeah, I think I think I think it was just a matter of uh, we need some discussion around it. I think Shad was concerned about um, uh, about going directly as opposed to uh, the I adapter interface. Uh, the uh, the only the only the only issue would be is if you're changing the uh, the KV store out right, and then all all that a level of interaction buys you is uh, is isolation from from a swap out of the KV store. So if we suspect that in the future we're going to swap out the KV store for whatever reason, then an abstraction layer makes sense. If we're going to hang on to the key, the, the KV store we have, and maybe not even an abstraction layer, just a, a very thin abstraction layer, so that so that you don't need to change everything if the KV store needs to be swapped out. I mean, that would be the only reason. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, have we bottomed out the etcd issues, Ken? I uh, no, not yet. Uh, we're still uh, we open a jura about that, and then uh, and we're trying to to see if it's uh, related to twisted or or not but so far oh that's right that's right you it, stefan was going to test with golang right to see if that we saw the same kind of performance deterioration and crashes uh yeah but it's uh he run the test uh, but the first results looks like uh, irrespective of twisted or, or golang uh, the etcd has issues with under heavy load okay yeah so we we'll, we need to figure out like uh we need to get the response from core OS. So, but, uh, but even that, that can be taken care of with a library. It doesn't have Well, to that's what I said, a thin, a very thin layer, which would be a library. <laughs> I, I think, or I, I think, I think we allow direct access and, and 
we can encourage adapters to abstract that access via a couple method calls they add, right? You know, yeah. And, and I, well, I, they should be the same for everyone, though, right? Or, or are you saying everybody just invents their own, you know, thin <sighs> library layer? I'm not sure. I mean, the question is, I would I want to start creating dependencies here around some of this. Stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. So particularly because, you know, the minute I say we're going to have the common library, which I'm, I can concede that's not a bad idea to have a common one. I know there's going to be a common one for Twisted or a common one for Python, a common one for Golang. Who's going to outwrite these, right? It becomes that issue. And we're already strapped for resources. Yeah. Well, I understand. I, but... You know, let's not make hasty decisions because of resource constraints. But anyway, uh, I, I'm okay with just leaving it for now and then reacting later if we have to swap out at CD for Cassandra or some other KB store because that CD just won't handle the load that it's that's going to be put on it unless the core OS guys can fix it. That's kind of where I am too. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Sergio, uh, Ken, um, on, on a kind of a related note, um, when, you, when you guys are looking at the course changes and, and, the, and the KV store access and opt optimizations, um, many places I've observed where we, we sort of, let's say I need uh, information on a, on a specific uh, port. I want to fetch a specific port or a specific, um, uh, let's say, sport. Um, what, what's usually happening is you get you fetch all the ports from the KV store. Um, there's no way to key a, 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 um, like let, let's say I'm, I'm looking for a particular um, uh, ONU uh, information. Um, you got to get get uh, get everything over and then sort of iterate over. Uh, I, I, I'm not uh, I'm forgetting the a, a actual examples. I um, you know, but you got to get a, uh, the entire information and then iterate over uh, and 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 kind of fetch to, to to get to the record that you're looking for. Um, that's, uh, that's because yeah, obviously because we can't hash over uh, every possible uh, key that that we want are looking uh, at. But uh, there's several instances where we where we fetch a lot more information that we need, then iterate over and and search through the through the list uh, for the exact uh, piece that you require. So if there if if we could kind of list the the keys that uh, that app, uh, that uh, adapters or the core. Uh, requires um, and sort of create hashes um, for for that like so, so that it's like a o1 uh, access to the database um, instead of an on um, so just as a just as a note uh, when you guys are thinking over the design yeah this this is unfortunately this is was the way the database was built uh, originally uh, in order to access one item like for example because the port in order to get there, you need to go through the through the route and then get to the device and then get to there because there's no way to access directly right, to the port because there's no hash direct that will access it directly. It's something we are looking at, uh, but I don't know how much of it we'll be able to do in 2.0. Like uh, the, the idea in 2.0 is to flatten out at the device level. And if we can go further than that, we will do. But uh, I think it may be an item for post 2.0. So would that is that something you think would be discussed during Thursday or or for a later time? So uh, we have a discussion for post 2.0 planned changes. Yeah, it's something that uh, we can we can bring up uh, on Thursday as well. Okay. So so when you say the device level, that that would be the OLT, right? There's no is there a device construct for the ONU as well? Oh. Yes, the uh, device is for OLT and ONU. Okay, all right. Okay, other discussion that we need to have today on this topic? I think there's still a lot of discussion to take place. Okay, uh, then hearing nothing, I think I'll go back to uh, the top of the agenda, take a look at some of the other items that are in progress. Uh, so let's see, we've got Venkata. Venkata, I see you're on. We did have uh, one item that was reopened up, that 651. 
And so I think that was just uh, reopened with a, a comment from Jono earlier. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Uh, I'm looking into it. Okay, thank you. So I have that one still slated for this sprint, then I believe. And then one of the new items or newer items that we have. Uh, Chip, are you still on as well? Yes, I am. Okay. So here's one, and I see you did assign it to yourself, but I'd like to briefly go over this new item as well, this new defect. Uh, yeah, it, it's basically in the event, in the uh, event bus class. During the publishing of events, it gets a list of um, callbacks to call. And if during if in one of those callbacks if you actually unsubscribe, then it will mess it will shorten the list prematurely, and you'll exit out early. So it basically you need a shallow copy of the subscription items. And I've I've added the uh, unit test and the code fixes up on here. have that posted here so uh, if we could get review on that and then we'll proceed. So any questions for Chip? Okay, thank you for that. And then uh, let's see. Chip, why don't we go ahead and jump down. This one is in progress, I think, for this work. So let's go ahead and jump down to uh, some more of the open OMCI issues if you'd like to briefly talk about what we're planning for sprint three at this point. Okay, um, I, I was mainly for myself looking at two primary things. One is um, adding, you know, some CLI or North Ballot uh, interface to be able to get uh, information from the uh, download or the uploaded OMCI MIB. And I'm currently, I just started on that this morning. And the other I think item was to start on the uh, PM uh, state machine. Okay, thank you for that. And let me see, do we have changes from EdgeCore? Are you on the bridge today? I'm not sure. So I'm still looking for for. Folks who are able to assist with open OMCI work, if you can contact Chip or myself, that would be appreciated. And then any other questions for Chip on the Sprint 3 plans for open OMCI? Okay, Chip, thank you for that. Okay. And then I think the next item I wanted to look at quickly was uh, full. 506. So, Andy, I think I saw you on. Did I see you on? I thought I saw you on. The, yes. Do we have an update on on this item? Um, so I have been trying. Mm -hmm. I know that the um, both Shanghai and the Greece uh, development teams are working on it. I okay. tried to get an update yesterday, and I apologize. I'm also working on. Uh, the 329, and if you guys got any other ones that you want me to, to do, please get them to me because we are wanting to support you and uh, and get this done. Um, so they they they've got equipment and all kinds of stuff and people committed, and so we've um, we want to do the right thing for you guys and just let me know what they are. And um, I tried again this morning to get an update, and they were in a individual sprint meeting. Um, something else so I couldn't interrupt but um, if you've got any notes for me Julie or Sean just send them to me and I'll, I'll make sure that they're done it's more All of right. an administrator okay so I have a question do you should I assign this to a different person right now it's still assigned to Niren so it sounds like he's no Niren Niren is driving it um, okay so I'll leave him as the assignee yes ma'am um, okay. and he yes. I don't know. He told me that it was going to be done like three weeks ago, and um, and if you're saying it's, it hadn't been completed, I know that I think that everything is completed, but they wanted to get very sophisticated with the test bed. Um, Let me just double check here. 
No, so yeah, this still has the, the old update, so it doesn't look like there's new InfoLender. Okay, so glad to hear yeah. it's being actively worked. And then uh, you know, if you have, if you receive an update, if you could post this uh, sort of a quick status for that. I will. Your, that'd be appreciated. I will. Okay. And I know I had responsibility for 329. Um, what other um, ones did I have that you know of or that um, you think are a fit for Nokia? I'm not having anything jump to the top of my mind right now, so I'll have to follow up on that with you. Okay. Well, anytime, if, if you would just give me a heads up and I'll try and get it done, of course. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And then the next item, let's go ahead and move on to 295. Let me see if Girish is on. Hey, hey Julie. Uh, yeah, Girish uh, isn't, isn't here today. Um, so okay. he, he gave me a quick update. He, he said basically it'll be done in the next couple of days. I'm not sure okay. what that exactly means. In <laughs> Hopefully by the end of the week. But, um, okay. It's but like, in any it's, case, it sounds it's, like it's on track for this spring. Yeah. Yeah. The next yeah. Few days. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that, Sean. And then, Ken, we think I think I already got updates from you, so we can go on to some of the open OLT issues. Uh, Shad, I don't know if you want to give a quick overview of what we're looking at for Sprint 3. That may be the best way to start off since we're just initiating Sprint 3 this week. Um. So Sprint 3, um, the first thing that's um, um, we're going to ha that's going to happen is um, we're going to move to a new version of uh, the Broadcom uh, SDK, which is uh, the BAL 2.6. Uh, it has uh, it's a long uh, LTS uh, release, so um, so that'll be good because we can stay on that for uh, for quite some time, and that also satisfies some of uh, Deutsche Telekom's uh, requirements. Um, in terms of support for registration ID and a couple of other things. And um, I'll be pulling in, um, after the, the, the 2 of 6 work is done, I'll be pulling in a, a few uh, GR stories uh, into three uh, into Sprint 3. Um, um, so I haven't done that yet. But there's a lot of progress being made from um, a, from the foundry. Um, so if somebody's from there, they can, they can give an update on that. So it's, it's all from my side. We've got anyone from the foundry on the bridge day. Uh, not hearing anyone. Okay. So, um, so, have, uh, so, yeah. so let, let me, um, on, on their behalf, uh, let, so we have a, a page up on, on the wiki, um, which sort of gives a feature list of, um, of the open OLT uh, and also a comparison with, uh, with the ASF Volt 16 uh, driver uh, adapter. Um, and um, so that, I mean, <clears throat> that's under the adapters uh, in, in the wiki, so people can go there and take a look at uh, uh, how the features are, are coming along. Um, so uh, the other thing is that, yeah, the main, main things that have happened is um, um, a lot of restartability, like uh, Volta standalone HA is, is working. Um, you can, you can uh, restart the, the, the Volta VM, you can restart the OLT, um, uh, all new reboots uh, are supported, so so a lot of good work has happened from the at and Foundry side, um, and uh, and the feature list uh, sort of shows it on the wiki. Great, and I think I found that page on the wiki, so I've got that up here. Thank you for that addition. Uh, any questions for the group for Shad on the Open OLT for Sprint Three? And this will help also for for me keeping track of things. So thanks for that in the wiki. So I think we'll start looking at technology profiles as well uh, in Sprint 3. I think we need to. Uh, right, Sean? Yeah, uh, but I think there's, there's, there's um, it, it's a big piece. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we can uh, we can get uh, someone else on board as well, uh, especially Radis. If, if, uh, if uh, they can commit to resources and we can form a, form a team and start working on it. Right, so uh, has Radisys made a decision yet? Uh, so uh, about? Yeah, yeah. So, so we're still um, discussing. Um, I think we've got one guy that can start pretty soon. Um, but it's not completely nailed down at this point. 
Okay, thanks, Sean. Thank you for that. And then, Sean, once you have some names, then if you can pass that on to me, I'll go ahead and add things into our chart that we have for keeping track of of what the various sort of sub teams are. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, um, uh, just, just, yeah. um, Julie, just another update on the uh, regarding tech tech profiles. There's a small piece of work uh, that uh, Sean Messer, um, uh calls it the resource manager, um, yes. and and that for the open OLT uh, is being done by Nick uh, from the Foundry. Okay. Um, so, so he's looking at that. So, so in in, in essence, um, we have started work on on, on tech profiles. Um, so we started off with the resource resource manager um, because that's local local to the adapter, and uh, he's um, he's looking at that. He's looking at that. Uh, he started. To, I mean, just okay. yesterday we had a meeting, and and, and we, uh, we we decided to start working on that. Yeah, I I cre actually created a subtask for that. Um, Do you remember which Jira that is? Uh, it's yeah. So it's hang. Yeah. yeah so, so if you go if you go to seven thirty one, you'll see there's two subtasks created. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Here's the subtask. Uh, okay. Yes, so yeah. So the yeah number one is the resource manager and there's actually so so i, I did add some uh, text around um you know what, what are the allocatable ranges for an xgs pon system um both for alloc id and gemport id um from an, from an ha perspective though um you know th there's some questions that probably need to be answered you know, if if we have a a uh, a backup, at least one backup uh, Volta or adapter instance is running. Um, you know, it, it can sync across from the active guide to the standby. Uh, if you have a single instance running, then um, ideally you want to be able to store these resources or values that are used in non volatile storage. Um, uh, so uh, it, right now, my thought was uh, when I create the in, when you create the instance of the technology profile, you can store the the allocated uh, values in the actual instance itself, uh, and then you could probably potentially rebuild your resource manager from that information if you you know start the system and the instance is stored in mem in in the KV store or some non volatile. Uh, location. Um, I mean, the KV store gonna... is available to everyone. I mean, so if there needs to that non-volatile uh, storage, that would seem the, the logical place to do it. Yeah. 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 And uh, so if you, you, I mean, you could you could rebuild your resource allocation based off of you know when, when you restore out the, um, the the technology profile instances. Um, you could build it as you go, I guess. Hi, hey, Sean. Quick question on on this resource manager: or Is this meant to be a global service to provide to all adapters? Because adapters may not uh, respect the same ranges that you're prescribing here, even though those are part of the spec. I understand. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, exactly. So, so this this resource manager would be, you know, in the context of uh, the adapter, let's say the open OLT adapter, for instance, and that would be specific to that guy. I mean, if someone else wants to use it because they have the same, you know, you know ranges, et cetera, that they, the adapter supports, it could. Um, okay. and we, could make, we could make it a common resource at some point. Okay, cool. But, but you know, you know, it, you know it, there are subtle differences between you know XGS pawn and NG pawn two. There are, you know, yeah. there's going to be potentially differences between you know one OLT adapter's implementation and another, um, depending on what chipsets used. And you know, it's, so so potentially you, you may need to customize. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Thanks. 
other questions for Sean on this one? This is one of the issues we plan to go over today anyway, so this is a good time. Yeah, so I, I just put this in. So if, if people could take a look or, or, or just you can send me you know, email, any questions or any issues, or anything that's, you know, any, any text that's in there. Yeah, I guess, you know, when I look at this and I think a more generic resource manager, if this turns into a bigger service and talking about different ranges, is it something that somehow you, you get to define a resource or label a resource and label its range and then people can pull allocations from it, right? I guess I, I, I worry when I look at this that do we want to make it XGS Pond specific or do we want to turn it into a more of a generic resource manager? Well, uh, like I said, it's it's going to be specific to you know, those differences between you know, GPON, XGS PON, and GPON2, and right. differences between different OL, uh, OLTs implementations of of what they support from these standard ranges. So, um, so, so I guess you're saying you just if if you have a generic resource manager where you can define what ranges you're going to support. Uh, then that could be done, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. That that'd be kind of what I'd be looking at. Yeah, but I mean, initially maybe just we go with the you know OLT local one, uh, and then we can look at gen genericizing that one once we have everyone's requirements. Yep, and that makes perfect sense. It just you know, I guess that from the design implementation point of view, the more you can. And you may do this already, you may be doing it already, the more flexible it can be to, to be able to define those ranges and not, you know, have these statically defined in the code. Then yeah. it would give us a, a path to something later on, maybe. All right, cool. Yeah, sure. I, I, I can uh, put some text around that. That's a good point. Okay, so, Sean, are you going to put some updates in the comments or in the description field then? Uh, in the description field. Okay. All right. Then let me go back to the board here. And I think what I'll do. Is Although, actually, there was an. Oh, I, okay. I, did add, add, I did add another subtask as well for something else in, in uh, 731. So, so, and this one just to just to bring this up was, you know, um, it, when we we're discussing the, um, you know, creating um, the open flow messages for um, a particular subscriber, then in the status database, um, it, you know, we were talking. Well, you could, you could add the bandwidth profile information directly, or you could basically ha add a reference. So, um, typically, the way Things are done uh, is to basically add a, add a reference to a bandwidth profile that then you know many many subscribers records can use the same reference. Uh, but then we need to be able to create the like a, a named bandwidth profile in a database that defi you know, defines a, an upstream bandwidth profile or a downstream bandwidth profile that can be you know then referenced and then then you know the the OLT application would then need to go and, you know, as it's looking at a database record to create the open flow messages, it needs to go get that um, reference bandwidth profile from somewhere. So this is, you know, we need to be able to create instances of these named bandwidth profiles um, and so that they need to be managed somehow. Questions for Sean on this one? Okay. Sean, are there any other new items that we need to go over for the the tech profiles over on the topic? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be trying and focusing on that today. I, I need to put together a, an agenda item for Monday and. Um, okay. Okay. I want to create, create any other subtasks that kind of come up that we can talk about. Okay, sounds good. So we'll defer that discussion till Monday. So thank you. And then I think what I'll do next is uh, we've got a number of the issues that we 
uh, carried over from sprint two into sprint three as well. And um, I don't know if we, let me take a look at this one quickly. Yeah, I don't think, Jono, I don't think we need an update on this right now. So I think what I'll do is jump down to a couple of the new issues that are on here for, uh, for bugs that were raised this week as well. And so, and these were opened by Matt, and I don't know if Matt is on the call. I don't think he is. So Shad, are you familiar with these two items that were raised? I, I think- 946, um, 947. Yeah, the, this is John, uh, the EAP, um, this is a problem that's been in the AAA app for a long time. Um, okay. There's a work, there's a workaround, but uh, yeah, Matt just raised the bug to actually fix it in, uh, in the proper way. Is, is this where it gets a record but doesn't complete authentication and so it drops the second start of the authentication? Yeah. Yeah, basically gets stuck in a in a state and doesn't proceed if even on uh, subsequent authentication. Okay, so the workaround you're talking about is the delete. The the delete. Yeah, either like delete, you either delete or... that. Yeah, yeah, either delete that record or um, restart the app mm -hmm. to to remove the state. All right. Thanks. Okay. Okay. So it looks like Nick has picked this one up to work on. So John, do you have any concerns there? Is that fine with you? Yeah, no, that sounds great. Okay, sounds good. And then while we're here, 947 was another one and that one Matt picked up for himself. And this is AAA radius authentication fails intermittently. Uh, actually, this sounds like the one we were just talking. Actually, maybe this is the one well, that I was talking yeah, about, I Matt about. Um, I think so. So I'm not sure what 946 is then. Because this one has the the workaround you talked about. Mm -hmm. I did they yeah. By, yeah. Okay, so let's go back and take a look. So Matt's working on that one, 946. This was... I think we started... Okay, so if you haven't talked with Matt or Nick about this one, then maybe we'll need to review it offline if no one's familiar with this ticket. All right, so I'll ask folks to look at that offline and we can see if we can get some follow-up discussion on the next call or else, you know, in JIRA or on Volta Discuss. We've got about 10 minutes left, so I think what I'm going to do is a uh, quick topic here. We'll spend just a minute or two on this and then we'll go through some of the new JIRAs, probably focusing, we went over some of the new functionality with some of the new tickets. So we may look mostly at defects. We'll take a look in a minute though. So we did have over Volt to discuss a proposal to start off a weekly engineering stand-up meeting, so a brief meeting and it looks like that has favorable response. So I have a question for the group if there's, um, I, if we have any ideas on time and day when something like that could be accommodated. Or do you want me to just try and propose something and see if it works for folks? Just a little reason. Yeah, I'd just, I just maybe send out an email with a couple of suggestions and I'm hoping this meeting is at max a half hour, right? It should be very short. Um, and then see, let people vote on the suggestions and the, the one with most people wins. Okay, thanks for that. So we'll try and get that set up. And then let's go back and look at the new and recent JIRAs starting with 972 and moving up since those are the most recent since our last meeting. I know we still have a number that we haven't discussed in detail that have been opened over the last few weeks due to lack of time. So I'm hoping we have continued review 
offline by folks as well. So this one is already done. I think we probably don't need to discuss it in great detail. So uh, this was an ATRAN OLT specific item. Uh, so Chip, if you want to give a quick summary, you can, and then we'll move on to the next. And this one's already done. Yeah, this was affixed just to the uh, ATRAN OLT device adapter to handle uh, receiving the um, uh, gym ports or TCONs at, at, at different intervals. Uh, for for part of our flow logic, so. Any questions for Chip? And then the next one. Is isn't that, that isn't that oh. a, gen, a generic problem though, uh, Chip? No, I mean, no. The, both, both both things are specific to the device adapter, and and the one before it, the O and U, is is basically um, making use of some of the changes in Open OCI both show an example and also to have it in a working going you. Oh. So it's, okay. it doesn't affect other people. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. And I think this one probably we can skip over that was getting the Atran ONU update for the latest OCI that was done in Spring 2. Uh, 929 is done as well. This ability to pack it out packets via the Open OLT northbound NNI interface. And so this one was completed in Sprint 2 as well. And then we have a number of new issues on the Open OLT and it looks like Tom Moore is still on also. So um, maybe if you don't mind, Tom, I'll let you talk about this batch we've got related to, we've got a number for a uh, collection of optical measurements and so forth. Do you want to give a quick summary of this group of issues? I think that might be the best way to cover this block. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Yeah. So the collection format is this JIRA, then the, the 931 is a functional um, operation retrieve current PM measurements. Uh, 932 is another functional one, report PM interval measurements. And then 933 through 941 are specific PM uh, measurements that would be um, available through those other functional interfaces. And 942 is um, to document the PM reporting formats on the Kafka bus, which um, would be um, related to the, the PM reporting format, uh, JIRA, but, uh, or the, the, the collection formats that we would actually would be new, a new definition, I understand. So, um, that's it. So just, just from my understanding, this is about standardizing how we put PM information on the Kafka bus. It's not about storage of that information after it's off the, on the Kafka bus or analysis or alarming is that accurate it's not about alarming it's um uh it's it's not about storage we could we could there there was some discussion in the presentation we had about that i want to go into it but there may be some um uh design on that there's been uh, regard regarding this this is this is uh essentially the uh, first atomic step um what we want to do for PM aggregation of collection, let's say on a 15 minute interval, there's been discussion of that for the uh, NEM and Cebiscope using um, uh, that mediation layer. So um, we, we may not be adding anything more here, but we might be discussing uh, over there uh, how we aggregate PM. Okay, no, I mean, I, I firmly believe that from a Volta perspective, Volta should just be publishing the PM data and something else should be processing it. So I, I actually like the idea that if I understand correctly that you're talking about Volt, you know, you, standard format's great, but uh, Volt is just publishing it for something else to consume it. So I like that approach. Yep, yep. yes, that's, that's the approach. Um, and um, we'll, we'll have more discussion on it as we go along on um, aggregation through a, a external from Volta. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions for Tom? Okay. And then I think the next one we have 
this one, which we talked about briefly a few minutes ago. And we did talk about 946 and 47 as well. Uh, Atran ONU specific, when we look at 945, I think that one is, is a new one. So Chip, if you're still on to briefly discuss this new item. Yeah, that's that's a new one that I I found while testing some of the Open OMCI and the Task Runner, and since you can create something to exclusively hold on to the uh, communication channel bus while it's doing its operations, since it ha it might be restricted to not allow other OMCIs to occur at the same time, if that task does not behave correctly, it could poss possibly lock the bus. So I want to make sure that there's a mechanism to uh, free it. Questions for Chip on this story? And actually, Chip, why don't I ask you while we're here? So are we expecting this to come into um, like one of the later sprints in 2.0? Uh, yes, it should def probably definitely be in 2.0, um, possibly the fourth sprint. It's It should okay. be a fairly simple feature. All right. I'll, I'll target it for 2.0 then at this point. Thank you for that. And then I believe we talked about this one a minute ago, one of the subtasks or one of the tasks or one of the other issues. So those are kind of the items that have come in since last Tuesday's call at least. So we got a quick recap on those. So thank you everyone for that. We've only got about two minutes left. So we're obviously not gonna have time to go over uh, some of these backlog items. I think what I'll do is these are ones we've been, I think following up with on uh, just in the comments in, in JIRA, but I wanted some of them to just have a quick view with the group because I believe some of them we can close out, for example, and others need some feedback from folks. But with two minutes left, we're not going to have time for that. So I think what I'll do is wrap up the discussion for today just with a last call for comments here on the you know, sprint three and kind of the initial progress we have, new issues that have come in, or we had a fair bit of discussion also on what needs to happen for branching and a, and a strategy for 2.0. So I think that still requires more discussion. But do we have other quick comments before we end today's call? Okay, then I think the next thing I'll do is uh, just let everyone know we've got a new agenda item for Thursday's call also. So the, we've got about an hour we're planning to spend on the presentations from Ken and, and others, if, if there are others that are presenting during that as well, for the planned core changes post 2.0, and then also a readout on that performance report. Uh, some, some of that was discussed last week in our brief discussion on today for a couple items also. So that is planned for Thursday, and we have a new agenda item also for 30 minutes planned for NetForge to give a presentation on what they've put together for Volta automated testing requirement and their high-level description want to get feedback from the community to make sure they're headed down the right path. So we've gotten a time slot for them on this Thursday's call. So again, this is a reminder of when we were looking at the agenda also that we have temporarily extended our Thursday meetings to 90 minutes. So we have time to cover more of these issues. And then also uh, not on a usual date, we have the uh, added meeting for tech profile architectural discussion. And then also Sean had agreed offline and David said he's available so we'll include in that some discussion of the tech profile and the relationship to changes in core and how to navigate that. So that's the upcoming uh, technical items that we've got com coming up over the next week for discussion. And then I think we'll just have to, I'll, I'll capture some items in the notes for the backlog issues, asking for feedback from the group, see if I can get some responses and others I will probably just continue to address via JIRA comments directly. So last call from the group before we drop for today. Uh, just one item, uh, Julie. Yeah. It's uh, for the Thursday uh, presentation. It will be two, not just uh, post 2.0 uh, plan changes. It will be okay. also changes in 2.0.
Okay. Oh, you're right. Actually, 2.0. Oh, let me let me just. That probably is implied by what I had. But there we go for 2.0 oh and 2.0 oh and thanks 2.0. Oh, that would be better. Thanks for that clarification, Ken. Anything else? All right, we're out of time, so I'll go ahead and stop the recording. And thanks, everyone, for your participation.